Hi everyone, Dave here at East Rosebud Fly and Tackle in Billings, Montana. It's been a little while since we did some videos. We've been pretty busy here at the shop over the Christmas time. I hope you've had a great holiday. Today we're going to tie what's called a vanilla bugger. Our IT guy, Bo, told me about this. It's apparently a very, very popular fly on the South Platte. You can tie it fully weighted or unweighted. I am going to show you, however, one problem when you're using a down eye hook and a cone. As you're tying in materials, and particularly as you're trying to whip finish, the cone will tip because of the down eye, which means your whip finish often ends up on the rear of the cone and not on the hook shank where it belongs. Of course, you can buy straight eyed streamer hooks, but the variety and a number of makers is unfortunately pretty small. I'm going to show you how to change this very quickly. Simply strip the cone off. We're simply going to heat this and bend it with a pair of flat needle nose pliers. With very small wire hooks like dry fly hooks, you can cold bend them. But on larger hooks like this, you really do need to heat the eye up first or you will break the wire. Now you can use a variety of things. You can use a butane lighter or a match but it gets pretty sooty. sooty. I'm just going to use here a small butane lighter and we're going to heat up this area. It doesn't need to be red hot but it needs to be pretty warm. Simply grab it with your pliers and bend it straight. And that solves that problem. Now our cone will sit perfectly even with the hook. Alright, so I'm using a 2x long streamer hook. You could use a TMC 5262. You could also very easily tie it on a 3x long streamer hook. This is a size 6. And I'm using Vivas 80 black thread and this is a size large brass cone. Of course you can use tungsten if you want. Now, like I said earlier, you can weight the shank of the fly if you want to, or you can leave it unweighted. But one thing I do recommend is putting a little bit of lead wire on the shank and pushing it up into this cone to keep that cone parallel with the hook shank. So I'm just going to use a little bit of .025 lead wire. We don't need much, just three or four wraps. Simply hold the lead wire on the far side of the hook, make two or three wraps, keep them close together, and then you can pinch that off or simply cut it off with an old pair of scissors. All right, push that in the cone. You can see our cone is nice and straight and it'll stay that way as we tie. So we'll start a thread base here right behind the lead. Use that lead wrap force that into the back of the cone and then we're simply going to wrap a thread base to the back of the fly. Alright, the first thing we'll do is tie in our tail. Now what I'm using here is Marabou Blood Quills. This is a burnish golden tan only because I ran out of tan but either one will work fine for you. Now in any blood quill, you'll find that the, uh, the quill thins very quickly as you get away from the base. We want to try to tie in that thinner quill, plus we don't need all this material. We only need about a shank length. So simply peel this material off. And again, you can see how quickly that shank or that, uh, that quill thins out. So we're going to measure our tail. Now I could wrap in this quill at this or this plume at this point and wrap forward, but I would be chasing this section all the way up the hook shank. So I'll show you a different way. Again, we'll measure our tail length to be about shank length long. Hold it here and then simply bring our fingers back up here. <laughs> Hold on here. So we have our tail length, and we pinch it up here behind the lid. A couple of tight wraps, 
and we'll cut off the butt of that. And then just use your index finger and your thumb. As you spiral wrap the thread down the shank, you could just keep the marabou pinched up on top where it belongs and all the way down to the rear of the hook shank, which is right above the back of the barb. All right, we're gonna add a little flash on this fly. This is just some pearl crystal flash. You could use different colors, of course. I don't like to over flash this fly, so I'm just going to take off four strands of pearl crystal flash. And I want a bunch on each side, It'll even up the tips. Place it on top of the shank and let the thread torque roll it over to the far side. Tie those butts down as we go forward. Make sure these are on the far side. And simply clip it tail length. And we'll use the same bunch. Come back on our side of the hook. Lay it on the bottom of the shank and the thread torque will bring it up to your side. Wrap over it through the base. Make sure you're all the way down to the tail butts. And we simply clip that, clip that off the same length. Now we'll put a second tail on top of this, which is pretty standard for a woolly bugger. Make sure we get a decent blood quill. Again, on this one you can see how thick the quill is down at the base and as we strip off about a bottom, the bottom third, the quill very, very quickly narrows to a usable width. So we already have our tail length established. I'm going to wrap this the opposite direction. Again, a couple of wraps, pinch wraps against the back. And then we'll just use our index finger and our thumb. Please. Try to keep this on top. We do some open spiral wraps and then come back and tighten it up. So that takes care of the tail. All right, what makes this um, fly a little unusual is that I'm using furry foam, cream colored furry foam for the body of the fly. Normally, of course, you would use something like Chanel, but the technique is identical. The stuff is not real strong, so you want to be careful about applying too much thread pressure on it or when you wrap it. We want the butt end of it right against the back of that cone and we'll wrap down it to the butt. Now this is something that a lot of people don't know, but when you're wrapping a Palmer hackle like this on a woolly bugger, you don't want to tie your hackle in right where the base of your materials are. What will happen is that as you wrap your materials forward, then the first wrap of your hackle will want to slide off the back of the tail. So always bring your tie-in point for your hackle forward the width of the material that you're using. We're going to put one wrap of this foam behind the hackle and then wrap it forward. That'll keep our hackle in place and it won't slip off the back. Now I'm using some Golden Badger hackle from a bugger pack. You could also use standard Badger, but I like the way those cream tips uh, complement the color of the fly. Now there's a couple of problems if you try to wrap the full stem hackle. One is that you're always going to have trap barbs on the side that's against the shank and that can be ugly. Also, if you have a long shank to wrap, it's difficult to keep the hackle vertical. The hackle will sometimes want to what I call is wrap flat like this, which destroys any use of that hackle. So what I like to do, hold the shiny side towards you, wraps about one inch down from the tip and simply bring those hackle fibers out vertically. And then I'm just going to pinch the hackles on my right hand side. This will be the side that lays against the hook shank. So one, I'll never have trapped hackles. And two, I'll always know which side of the hackle belongs against the hook shank so I won't have any issues with a flat wrap. We'll cut off that little marabou end. Okay, now, 
with the trimmed side down on the hook shank. We're going to separate the point where we started peeling off the hackles and we're going to tie it in one wrap ahead of our body width material and simply tie over it. and right up to the back of the cone. So what we'll do now, lift the hackle up, bring one turn, again be careful with the foam, one turn behind the hackle. Get your hackle out of the way and then wrap forward keeping the foam flat and we want this snug right up behind the cone. A couple of firm thread wraps cut off the excess. Now when we wrap the hackle and I'm wrapping it with the shiny side facing the back of the hook so that the hackle will want to lay backwards. We're going to take one wrap where we tied it in and then we're going to come forward into the edges of where we wrap the foam so that hackle kind of slides down into that which helps to protect it then once we get to the back of the cone, we'll take a couple of wraps to make a bit of a collar. A couple of firm thread wraps to bind that quill down and cut it off close. Make sure that you've got your thread behind that quill so you don't lose it. And then it's a simple matter of whip finish it. I like to apply two whip finishes. I don't want any head cement on that hackle. And try to keep that whip finish right behind the cone. There you go. The Vanilla Bugger. If you're on the South Platte or anywhere else, give it a try. With little weight except for the cone, it won't fly, it won't fish real deep, but you'll have a lot of latitude on how you fish it. As always, thanks for joining us. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact us. We'll see you next time.